Go ahead and raise your raise your hand. There we go. Hey, Hubert, how you doing? Good. How are you? Doing Good. all right. Hey, you said the other night you were you weren't quite sure how you felt in the immediacy of right after the win. I'm kind of curious what the last few days have been like in terms of guys processing what happened, how they rose to the occasion, and then trying to move forward and being learning from what they did well. Well, I mean, I, you know, we're, it was an emotional night. It was the end of the regular season, and it was an emotional game. Any time that you play Duke and you play an unbelievable opponent on the highest stage, it's there's a lot of emotions that come out. And so, um, you know, we're very thankful that, that, that we played well enough to beat a great um, Duke team, but our focus and our mind is on our preparation and our practice and seeing how good we can be in, in the ACC tournament this week. Dina? Hey coach, I, I was wondering if you have changed your practice uh, approach for the upcoming postseason are you concerned about your guys legs they they played a lot of minutes here lately no we haven't changed practice at all I you know um you know the length of practice hasn't changed the things that we're doing um to prepare and to put ourselves in a position to be at our best hasn't changed um I know especially specifically the starting five has played a lot of minutes and throughout the year, um, I feel like we've done a really good job at keeping track of their workload and practice and making sure that um, not only do they stay healthy, but they stay fresh and strong. And so I feel like, I feel like we're in a really good spot. CL. Hey, Hubert, um, has there been a different bounce about the kids and about practice since uh, since Saturday, Saturday's game? And do you feel like that this big win will be different than other wins this season when uh, you mentioned at one point you, you didn't – I don't remember how you put it, but the, almost like they couldn't handle the prosperity. Well, no, I, you know, I think, I, I think how we have, you know – Handle this past Saturday is I, I, I think I think the excitement is you know how how we're playing over the last month and a half. Um, I don't think it has anything specific due to our game against Duke this past Saturday. I just think you know finishing out the regular season with five wins in a row, um, you know winning eleven out of our last thirteen games as I. I I said this a number of times over the last couple of weeks. It's just the health of this team is at an all-time best. I feel, and our togetherness is at an all-time best. And so, um, the confidence and um, and the joy that I think our players are feeling is is because of that. It's not directed on. Um, this past Saturday, I think it's based upon the last month and a half and just um, just how well we're playing. I'm sorry, Brendan Marks. Hey, Hubert, offensively, obviously, you guys uh, scored the most points that anybody has against Duke all season, one of your best scoring outputs in general. What did you like, especially in the second half, about the offensive balance you guys had on Saturday? I think you took 16 threes in the first half, only seven in the second, but were obviously able to make some looks when you needed them the most. Well, I, I really, you know, first of all, I thought we played better defense in the second half. You know, in the first half, I think Duke, Duke shot 58% from the field, and so – teams are making close to 60%. There's not a lot of rebounds to get and be able to get out in transition. And so I, I felt like our defense was a lot better and it allowed us to get out in transition. I, I think another key for us being so efficient was we took care of the basketball. I think we only had one turnover in the second half. And so we got shots. 
fact, and I've always believed if we can get out in transition and we can get shots more times than not, we're going to make them. You know, we have the cool thing about us from an offensive standpoint is, you know, we don't have FGA guys. We ha we have FGM guys like they make shots. And, you know, Brady was very efficient. Uh, RJ was brilliant and um, distributing the basketball and understanding when to pass and shoot. Armando was fantastic around the basket and leaky, just timely baskets and, you know, his ability to create shots for others and his teammates has been consistent and great the entire season. And, and then Caleb started heating up in the, in the second half and in large part, because I think he was taking better shots. And so from that standpoint, I thought, you know, in the second half, we were really, we were really good offensively. We were getting the shots that we wanted. Coach, you're correct. There was only one turnover in the second half, and that was the play with about two minutes to go where Armando chased it down and blocked it from behind when it was a six <laughs> game. So, And five for the game is a season low. So, uh, Michael Coe? Hey, Coach, I've always been curious about this come tournament time, but what is it like to have to prepare for three different teams at once, the three teams that you could play in the, in the quarterfinal on Thursday? Well, you know, we've – you know, the great thing about conference basketball is, you know, your opponent is known because you have, whether it's been once or twice, it is, it is a known opponent. To me, and one of the things that I communicate to the guys is, you know, when I, when I was here at Carolina, we didn't do any scouting reports. You know, Coach Smith used to write the names of the opponent on the board, and he used to put a star next to a guy that can shoot and put two stars next to a guy that can really, really shoot. And that was it. And and his theory was if we just do the things that we've practiced and practiced, it doesn't matter what team you play, what play that they run, it'll put us in a position to be able to fend it and play it the right way. And 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 I really believe that. You know, I know that we have shoot arounds now and we have scouting reports, but in large part I I think at some point it's overrated. It, it's basketball. And you know, um it's the team that can consistently do the things that they've worked on all year are the teams that are going to play the best in tournament play. And so, um, and that's the things that I've communicated to the team throughout the, in the entire season. It's not about scouting reports. It's about us. It's about us playing the right way on both ends of the floor. And if you do that, um, we'll be in good position uh, to win the game. Thank you. Greg Barnes. Hubert, so so do you not really use scouting reports? I do. Okay, you do. Okay. I, I just said that, you know, when I was at Carolina, we didn't have scouting reports. And so I think there's a I think there's a benefit to having scouting reports. I one hundred percent believe that. I do not believe that you need scouting reports. I don't rely fully on scouting reports. It's 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 about us. It's about our preparation. It's about how we play. And to me, that's the most important thing. Gotcha. Uh, I, I wanted to ask, with this being you know, the ACC tournament, uh, I know you're very much on the next opponent. Do you approach this, the postseason, the same as you do a regular season game, just in terms of only focused on this one particular game, don't worry about the tournament format? I, I think that's the only way you can approach it. You know, our our approach is whomever we play on Thursday at 930 is that our hope is, is that we play really well and that we play really well enough that they give us a chance to come back the next day and play again. And I've always felt that way. I've always, not just in basketball, but in anything, is to focus on the things that are real and that are right in front of you and, and what's real and what is in front of us is the only guaranteed game we have is on Thursday. And so our focus and our concentration and our efforts on being the best that we can be on Thursday, whomever we play. Thank you. Ross. 
Hey, Coach, uh, you spoke about R.J. Davis uh, uh, earlier and also on your radio show last night. And obviously, you've been raving about his performance against Duke. And what I've noticed in his improvement is his shot making at the basket and how he has become a lot better at scoring at the rim over bigger, bigger defenders. I was wondering what you've seen about that development, um, what you've taught him, what you've maybe coached him, and, and just about his shot making at the basket. That's something that uh, one of the things that, that R.J. worked on a lot this past summer was uh, finishing around the basket. You know, he doesn't have great size, and so, but he can be crafty in his ability to get to the basket. You know, he can use floaters, he can finish with either hand. He's very crafty at finishing around the basket. And I think, you know, his freshman year, he would take it to the basket and, and he just wasn't getting the right angles. And at times he was getting it blocked or, you know, the shot blocker was altering the shot, and, and this year, you're exactly right, he's finishing much, much better. Um, his, his, his floater is really good. His ability to finish with either hand, he's using his body and using angles to get the ball on the board before the shot blocker gets there, and he's playing at an extremely high level. I, I, I told him after practice yesterday that he was brilliant, and he's been – He's been close to brilliant the entire season. He's having such an unbelievable sophomore year, and I'm just such a joy to coach him and be around him, and I'm just very, very proud of RJ. Davis Wells. Coach, there's been a lot of conversation being said about the post-game handshake with Chris Caldwell and Nolan Smith. And from videos, you gave a little confused look. I was just wondering, have you had a chance to talk to any of those assistants? Because there's been words saying that you were snub or yeah, you snubbed them before the game. I was just wondering if, if that was the case. No, I, I actually I had a conversation with uh, John Shire yesterday and also Chris Carwell, and we had – and I had um, two great conversations with both of them. Um, my relationship with Coach K and the rest of the coaching staff before the game was in a great spot, and it's in a great spot right now. And um, I really enjoyed my conversations with John and also Chris. And at the end of our conversations, we both wished each other luck for the remainder of the season. Sierra. Hi there. Um, this question is a little bit similar to what's been asked before, but how, if at all, is the team's identity and intensity going to change going into the ACC tournament? I, I don't want our, our I, I don't know what our identity is. Um, what I want our, our identity to be is a team that um, gets after it defensively, rebounds the basketball, and and limits turnovers. We've identified those three things that allow us to have success out there on the floor. And those are things that we talk about daily and, and making sure that those three areas, we can check the box in a game. And so um, I, I do think, you know, in terms of identity, I think we're a team, a, a tough team, um, a resilient team. And I think that's been proven by the way that this team has continued to persevere and and bounce back through ups and downs in a season to put themselves in a position where they are right now. And I can't be any happier with the uh, with the group of guys than than the guys in the locker room right now. Got time for a couple more, Dina, then Brendan. Coach Caleb Love is been phenomenal in the last five minutes in overtime in the last seven games. All his shooting percentages are, are outstanding, 54 from the field, 46 at three, 93 at free throw. Why is he becoming such a big clutch player for you in those final minutes? Well, you know, Caleb has tremendous confidence in his game, and that's one of the things that I love about Caleb is, is that – not only does he have confidence in his game, but the willingness to step up in those situations. You know, the pass at Clemson, you know, the, the plays that he made at Louisville, you know, the play that he made at home um, at Louisville, um, the shots and the, and, 
in, in the plays that he made against Syracuse, and and then you talk about you know in the second half versus Duke, and um, you know his toughness, um, his confidence in stepping up in big time situations and making positive plays. And the thing that I really love is is not just about his shot. You talked about his shooting percentages, but just in late game situations, his ability to create for others and being able to pass the ball. And, and um, those are the things that, uh, and also step up defensively and get stops. Those are the things that, um, that I'm really proud of, of Caleb in those late game situations, um, his ability to step up on both ends of the floor in many different ways. The time for one last question, Brendan. Hey, Hubert, I wanted to follow up about what you mentioned about Coach Smith's scouting reports between one star and two stars. Uh, what, did, you, did you ever talk to us and, you know, would you have gotten one star or two? And uh, how did you – have you incorporated that in any aspect into your own? I, I hope I would have gotten two stars. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I remember Dennis Scott got two stars. <laughs> I remember Tom Gugliala got two stars and Rodney Monroe got two stars. Uh, if you guys see Chris Corciani, tell him he got zero stars. <laughs> tell him that. <laughs> We're good friends, so tell him he got zero stars. But uh, no, we, we don't use stars, but we do identify guys that, that can really shoot the ball. Um, better than other teammates and you know how we're going to defend them differently how we're going to close out to them and help situations differently how we're going to be on high alert in transition to make sure that we find them when we don't leave them open and so in a different form other than you know asterisks or you know um, we do um, highlight guys that have a, a better ability to shoot the ball from the outside. But I hope that I got two stars. That I would assume so. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not my freshman year. I had zero stars my freshman year. <laughs> I don't – Based on that question, I don't know if I should clarify or not. Our co our assistant coaches still do scouting work. They still scout mm -hmm. the other team, and they give Coach Davis the scouting report. No, I know. I, I, I no, sure. I know. I was just wondering, you know, what what Coach Smith's delineator was between one versus two. But I'm, I'm pretty gritty. Yeah, tell 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 Chris Corciani zero stars. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you.